Okay. All right. Well, yeah, my computer downstairs decided to be slow and stupid. And so I had to run upstairs now at the last minute to do it from upstairs. And the webcam mm -hmm. on this one's a little bit more finicky. So I yeah. can only imagine your panic when it's not working running. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'll go down 15 minutes early. And my computer is like glacially paced and I have to restart it. And then it doesn't want to load up. Anyway, you, we said there were going to be technical snafus, so I'll be the first one to have technical snafus on everyone's behalf. Oh, no, it's been on. We've had the <laughs> snafus already on our end. So tell us okay. a little bit about yourself and tell us a little bit about your, your upcoming games. All right, cool. Yeah, hi. So my name is Francisco Gonzalez. Uh, I am an indie adventure game developer. I've been doing it for a very long time. Uh, I started off in uh, the early 2000s. Uh, I made a freeware series called Ben Jordan Paranormal Investigator. Um, and then I went commercial in 2013 and have released three games so far. A Golden Wake, which is a historical fiction about a real estate agent in 1920s Miami. Uh, I did a game called Shardlight, which was a post-apocalyptic story about a woman uh, trying to find a cure for a deadly disease uh, <laughs> to reel these days. And uh, 2018, I released Lamplight City, which was a detective game set in an alternate uh, history, sort of steampunky, uh, Victorian-esque uh, city. And I'm currently working on Rosewater, which is a point-and-click Wild West adventure set in the same alternate history. Well, wow, so you've really had quite a quite a background. So you say you started, you put put out your first game. Was it 2013 that you said, or you went? Uh... Yeah, my first my first commercial game mm -hmm. uh, was in 2013. But yeah, my the the Ben Jordan series I started in 20 or sorry 2004 through 2002. Two, I can't even talk. 2004 through through 2012 was the the Ben Jordan series, and those were all freeware, free to download. Um, but I started working with Adventure Game Studio in about 2001, and I made a few little small games back then also. So, yeah, that's that's been my my programming history. You know, it's... We're going to make up a list of eclectic uh, topics and settings and backgrounds. I probably would have ended up with your game list. <laughs> you know? And I mean that, you know, in the highest, most positive way. Uh, like... How, do you have a favorite? Why, why do you keep kind of bouncing around from paranormal to, you know, 1920s Miami to post-apocalypse to... Yeah, no, no, I, I appreciate it. I, yeah, I mean, I've always, I mean, I've always loved adventure games, um, obviously, or I wouldn't be making them. Um, but yeah, I always, when, when it came to, like, making my own adventure games, I, uh, I always wanted to think about like stuff that had never really been seen before even though like the Ben Jordan series was basically me wanting to make Gabriel Knight or Broken Sword like I always loved the, the thing I loved about those games was how they meshed real world places and history with the fictional so I wanted to make the Ben Jordan series about like instead of being like a monster of the week type thing I wanted to make it be about you know like local folklore and legends and stuff like that um so that series was a chance to explore that. And then, yeah, when I, when I decided to, to do this for a living, the first thing I thought about was like, well, I like the history of my hometown, Miami. And I think the, the whole real, you know, the, the, the Florida land boom and all that stuff would make an interesting, unique uh, background for an adventure game. Because, I mean, you know, obviously, like the Dagger of Amon-Ra was, was a huge influence as far as like the time period and the Art Deco and stuff. Um, and yeah, like Shardlight, I had never really thought. Actually, Shardlight started off again wanting to be like a historical thing. I wanted to do a game set like during the Black Plague, but that evolved into a, a post-apocalyptic setting. Um, and with Lamplight City, it was like you know I I had always wanted to do like a Sherlock Holmes style like foggy streets of London type game, but I wanted to put an, a unique spin on it. And same thing with with Rosewater, like. I've never been a huge fan of westerns necessarily, but I was like, well, I've built this world. What else, what other part of it can I explore? Let's see the old west. And then I thought, well, as far as western point and clicks go, there aren't really very many that are not like Blazing Saddles esque comedies. So, right. So, like the unique selling point is 
the fact that it's a Western that's not a comedy. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. It's just like, yeah, you, you finally do two games in the same universe, and they're still completely different. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I, mean, I, I love the variety. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I, I always... I try and strive to be different. Like I, I don't want to, I don't want to keep making the same game over and over again, which is kind of inherently a, a no, I don't want to say a trap, but like yeah. in the, in the genre, like there's, it's really hard to innovate the point and click adventure. Right. Mm -hmm. So like you're, you're expecting it to work or play a certain way. So my way of trying to innovate is by trying to find unique settings or at least, you know, places we may not have seen before or, or heard about before, things like that. Yeah, and I appreciate the fact that uh, you decided to do your own IPs, or, you know, not just continue to, to build on what you already have, which, as you mentioned, seems to be seems to be the norm in this industry. And speaking of uh, of people who are doing things their own way. We got Wajedi Games in the stream who's basically saying that your games are very topical. So I've heard some people <laughs> say that you're the new Dave Gilbert. So what do you think about that? <laughs> wow. I'm sorry, Dave, if that's what people are saying. Yeah. yeah, the old Dave Gilbert is still busy being Dave Gilbert. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, it's funny because Dave and I basically got our start at the same time, but we our paths kind of diverged. I mean, he, he started the business end of things a lot sooner than I did. And he was very kind to get, let me get my foot in the door and publish my first two games. So it's interesting. Cause like, you know, we've, we've been doing it for roughly the same amount of time, but he's definitely built his little empire. <laughs> well, with your help, well, sure. very, very little of my help. I mean, there's been plenty of other great developers who have helped, and of course, Dave's own games, too. Absolutely. So, yeah. Now, I mean, um, I, yeah, I let's, let's, talk, let's talk about, um, let's talk about uh, Lamplight City and, sure. and Ro particularly Rosewater. Um, mm -hmm. You say it's set in the, in the same universe as, yeah. as Lamplight City. A um, couple of characters possibly make an appearance, or at least mentioned, was that always the plan for the next game that you did, or did you did you just think actually I, I actually really like this world that I've built. I I quite want to create more of it. Yeah, it was basically that. And also, <laughs> Michael, forgive me. I know that we talked about this like three years ago, and I was like, oh, it'll be out next year. It'll be out next year. And three years later, I'm still like working on it. But um, so apologies to you, and apologies to everybody else who. <laughs> has been following the development, but uh, I, I very naively was like, oh, I can make a game the same size or bigger as Lamplight City at twice the resolution and it's less time. That was not the case. But anyway, yeah, um, I this think it was been a strange about... three years too, right? What's that? This has been a strange three years too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, it didn't really affect my workflow because I was working from home anyway, but yeah. Getting out there, Francisco, you blew it. Yeah, yeah, I did blow it. I, I didn't. I over, I over scoped. It's anyway, all on, it's all on you then. Yeah, no, totally. Um, but uh, yeah, so so about halfway through or midway through the the uh, development of Lamplight City was when I got the idea to to expand the world, and I thought, oh, making a western would be cool, and uh, and then I also thought, like you know, I've done a lot of investigation mystery games. Why don't I try doing an adventure game, like adventure in the sense of like Uncharted or Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, where it's actually like an adventure story. So it's a treasure hunt story, which I've never really done before. So yeah, that's that's where that came from. So tell us a little bit more about, about Rosewater. Okay. What can we expect from the game? Yeah, so Rosewater is a uh, it's an adventure game set in an alternate history Wild West. You play as a character named Harley Legere, who is the sister of Bill Legere, who is the dead partner slash disembodied voice that you heard in Lamplight City. Um, it's set after the events of Lamplight City, but it's not a direct sequel. It's more of a, a side quill. Um, and Harley is a former uh, pugilist turned writer who has escaped the East Coast and is living out West. And she comes to the tiny town of Rosewater 
with the intent of starting fresh and becoming a writer for the local paper. And she gets assigned to do this puff piece uh, profiling this guy named Gentleman Jake, who's doing like a Wild West show in town. And so she does that. And it, over the course of the interview and the uh, following events, Jake says, hey, I'm putting together this, uh, this expedition to go look for this, this missing fortune that's belonging to, that belongs to this guy. Um, you want to come along? And she's like, okay. So she comes along and she meets all of these uh, wacky characters. Well, not wacky characters, but she meets these interesting characters. Uh, she forms this little posse with five companions and they journey across the frontier in search of the this treasure and hijinks ensue. Um, and the, the sort of uh, unique selling point, aside from being a Western drama, is that the relationships with your companions affects the trajectory of the story so like during the i kind of compare it to indiana jones and the fate of atlantis with like the paths thing where you know like the very first puzzle you solve determines what sophia tells you like or suggests what path you're going to take mm -hmm. except in this case how you treat your companions and like if you're snarky to them it actually has consequences on your relationship with them whereas if you're nice to them same thing and throughout the second act there are little mini uh, storylets or little like excursions with, with, I mean, there's, there's main scenes that don't change throughout the game. There's little randomized encounters that happen that are randomized. And then there's companion specific excursions. And there's two possible ones for each companion. One's a high relationship and one's a low relationship. So depending on what your relationship is with them, you'll get a different path through the second act and then at the end of the second act the situation is such that the group is configured in a specific way depending on your companion relationships and then your path through the third act also depends on what companions you have with you so it's kind of like the second part of indiana jones and the fate of atlantis but at the end of the game rather than it all converging on atlantis and being the same thing again that's also why it's taken so long, because there's a lot of optional content in this game. <laughs> I can imagine you're writing it there going, yeah, okay, I'm finished. Well, actually, I'll just add one more thing, which yeah. leads to another thing. I mean, what, what I'm hearing from you is, um, in one word, is replayability. Yes. Which I think is a massive thing in adventure games, uh, because you can spend two, three, four, five years doing it, and then someone plays it, and in a week it's done, and then that's it. But like me, I played Lamplight City three times, and I still haven't got everything right. Well, that's... Um, and I can imagine myself playing Rosewater until I've done all the endings. I mean, I feel like that's an important thing these days, don't you? I do. At the same time, I realize that it's kind of a big ask because there are so many games coming out that asking someone to play your game once is enough of a big ask, let alone asking them to replay it. So I, I realize that not everyone is going to replay it. But what I really want to happen is for one person to play it and another person to play it and they'll talk about it and be like oh yeah i really love that scene where this happened and the other person being like what i didn't see that this happened in my game and then that's sort of like oh wow cool there actually is a lot more to this than i thought <laughs> um but yeah it's a lot <laughs> i don't know if you agree with this assessment but uh, it, it seems to me that you know you tend to favor more story over sort of puzzle challenge is that very much by design or you know how do you how do you find that balance for your games yeah that's that's the most difficult thing um with lamplight city definitely there was the whole i got rid of the inventory because i didn't think that inventory combination puzzles really fit with the tone of the game um and that was kind of a a big thing for some people, because it was like, if you don't have inventory, that means it's not really an adventure game, which I disagree with because Blade Runner is a, a great game. That game doesn't have inventory. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I went back to, I went back to inventory with Rosewater, but for me, every time I, I design puzzles, I tend to keep my puzzles more grounded in reality. So obviously if you find like a crowbar, you're going to use it to pry something open, not to combine it with string and chewing gum to make a fishing rod, right? So a lot of the times the, the criticism there is, oh, well, the puzzle's too easy and it's too easy because it makes sense, right? So, so yeah, I tend not to favor the more out there 
crazy puzzles. And as a result, my puzzles are a little bit more easy because of that. But I definitely, for this game in particular, I definitely have been focusing on the puzzles being about telling you about the world or the characters or the story or something like that. Like, I don't, I don't want the puzzle to come out of left field and be right. like, well, random fetch quest. In fact, I, 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 I have lampshaded it a little bit in that, like, I don't know if you guys have played the demo, but um, the first major, the only real obstacle in the demo is getting in to see the Wild West show and the kid outside asks you to get him something and you can punch him out and avoid the whole puzzle. And originally, in, in the original pre-voice acting demo, it was just kind of like, all right, well, you wind up in jail and Jake shows up and bails you out and you have a little dialogue or whatever. But then I realized, you know, this doesn't feel as satisfying as like the, the actual puzzle path. So I added an extra exchange where he asks you like, well, why did you punch the kid out? And one of the options is, you know, he was trying to send me on a pointless quest and I didn't feel like it. So I, you know, whatever. So it's kind of a little wink there to, you know, the player who doesn't want to do a pointless quest. Wait, well, it's not a pointless quest, but, you know, the player doesn't want to do the, the adventure game fetch quest, you know. <laughs> and it's within her character because she's a former boxer. So it's believable that she wouldn't take crap from some kid who wants her to go fetch something. For sure. You've uh, you've mentioned Fate of Atlantis. You've mentioned knocking people out. Would you say that the Indiana Jones uh, games are something that inspired you for for your games? Um, I mean, I take inspiration from tons of of the old classics. I would say that, like, if I were to throw a li make a laundry list of the games that have inspired Rosewater. Definitely Fate of Atlantis is on there, but also stuff like Conquest of the Longbow, as far as like the, the branching and the variety of stuff, and Full Throttle as far as like the aesthetics of the sprites and stuff like that, and the, the sort of like cinematicness of it. Um, but yeah, definitely also Fate of Atlantis for the paths thing, and just the, the whole sense, like the grand scale of like you're traveling. You're not world traveling in this one, but you are traveling. It's, a, it's definitely a road trip A to B story. So it definitely has those elements too. So you're obviously a prominent figure now in the adventure game community. Where do you see the adventure game genre going? I mean, it's now branched into VR. It's kind of gone backwards in some aspects when it comes to a lot of people enjoying the pixel, myself included. Where do you see it happen going within the next five years? Well, first of all, thank you for saying I'm a prominent figure. That's very kind of you. I still don't quite, can't quite wrap my head around that idea. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the adventure genre has been flourishing. Just, I mean, just look at this past month alone, how many releases there have been. I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. If anything, I see it getting more and more, you know, just, I don't, just, I just see it growing. And, um, yeah, I'm curious to see where it goes. Like, I know, like you said, VR, like I'm not super, uh, I don't have my finger really on the pulse of VR development, but I would love to see more like just what can be done and what can be, what innovations can be brought to the medium with VR and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just hopefully still see this being a strong market in, uh, in five years because I'd still like to be doing it in five years. So you know, yeah. Do you think Rosewater yeah. will be out in five years? I, if Rosewater <laughs> is not out in five years, I will be in a cardboard box on the street. So yes, I hope so. Well played. Uh, actually, that, yeah. Talking about the development, like like yeah. you said, we spoke about. I mean, I don't even know. Like you say, two three years ago, and yeah. busy working on it then. Um, it's now back end of twenty twenty two. A yeah. lot has happened since then worldwide and in the game you've, you've yeah. just um, released a new demo with all the new voice acting so yes. like how near are you inverted comments completing it pretty close i mean we have our second batch of voiceover recording starting uh next week and once that's all done and edited really what's left i have maybe about 10 backgrounds left and a few and some character animations but the game is fully playable um so after that it's just polish getting the last bits of music in the localization so i'm estimating early next 
er, early to mid next year at the very latest. There's no reason it should, un, unless something explodes or I lose everything, there shouldn't be any more hurdles, hopefully. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of the voice acting, can I do a, can I talk a little bit about the voice acting? Because I feel like that's another unique selling point. Please, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I was watching earlier, um, when, um, oh my God, who was it talking? Oh, Lu Tom, Tom was talking about, uh, Lucy dreaming, getting Dominic Armato and all the, all the union paperwork. And I feel for him because, uh, early on in production, I, I decided to make Rosewater a union project. And it was uh, it was a lot of talking and a lot of uh, negotiating, but I was able to make it happen. And I'm very proud of the cast that I assembled for Rosewater. Um, there's a lot of really cool people in it. Um, if you played the demo, you heard a few of them. People like Dave Finoy from The Walking Dead, or if you go way back, King's Quest VI and Curse of Monkey Island. Uh, Neil Ross, who was the narrator on Freddy Farkas and the Leisure Suit Larry games. Bunch of people, uh, Leilani Jones Wilmore, who played the Voodoo Lady and Carla in the Monkey Island games. Wow! And it's been amazing to work with these people, and it's just been a really interesting process. And just seeing the difference between like working with non-union actors and union actors, both are great, by the way. I don't want to be like, oh, this is so much better, yeah. but just the 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 difference is notable and interesting. And I really, really like. I've been proud of the voice acting in all of my games. But I, I always try to push myself to, to like level up in some regard with each game. And I think Rosewater's voice over is definitely leveled up over my previous games. So, yeah, look out for that. <laughs> and, and if you are not following him on social media, do so. You always show off the, the voice acting when it comes to that. And I've been, I've been enjoying watching those. So do, do that. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> The behind the scenes videos, yeah, those have been those have been cool. Everyone has been really, really sweet and nice about like letting me record them. So it's hopefully that trend will continue with the remaining ones. We don't have too much time left, but uh, mm. we just talked about how the adventure genre itself might evolve. How do you see yourself as a designer having evolved since the early Ben Jordan days? Oh man, well <laughs> for one okay, thing, not since Ben Jordan, maybe since a Golden Wake. No, no, no. Well, I mean, definitely from Ben Jordan and even from A Golden Wake, like, I think I feel like I've evolved, hopefully for the better in all aspects. I mean, I've definitely gotten better at art. Um, I learned what perspective was. So that was real important. Um, yeah, uh, I feel like I've gotten better at writing. Um, I know Lamplight City was very dialogue heavy. Uh, this one is too, but I feel like I've learned how to write less dialogue and still get the point across. Um, I also feel like my puzzle design has graduated from just like, hey, I played a bunch of adventure games. This is what they did. Maybe this is what I should do to actually sitting down and thinking like, well, what would make this fun? Um, because ultimately, that's that's kind of where my design philosophy has gone. Like, I just want people to have fun and enjoy the game. Like Rosewater, it's dialogue heavy. It's not as dialogue heavy as Lamplight City. Obviously, there's puzzles beyond just talking to people. But ultimately, what I want people to feel like when they finish Rosewater is... I just went on a road trip with a bunch of friends and I had fun doing it. Um, and yeah, so like, I guess the general answer to your question is I, I, I like to hope that I've gotten better at everything. Um, and I hope to keep getting better as I keep doing it. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, Clayton, we Clayton, we really appreciate you <laughs> coming on it. I, I, I was looking at Clayton on the on the screen here, but you know, we'll also we'll also call you Francisco. Okay, we, we really appreciate you coming on the the show. It's only it's only been uh, what three hours so far. You gotta yeah, have another. Yeah. So you got nine left. <laughs> nine left. You know, I did a twenty-four hour stream all by myself for another game launch uh, a while back ago, and I tell you what, uh, it was nuts. So yeah, three hours. Yeah. We appreciate you, my friend. Make sure that you follow Francisco on all of the social medias. Make sure that you keep in touch when it comes to Rosewater, and we appreciate you coming on, my friend. Yes, thank you for 
thank you very much for having me on. And yeah, follow me at Grunisov Games on Twitter. Wishlist Rosewater on Steam. You can check out the demo. It's still up. I'll be at Adventure X showing it off too. So if you're going there, come by and say hi. Uh, and yeah, great. Best of luck with the launch. And I look forward to seeing how the website grows and evolves. Great. Awesome. That's how it's done. That's how you drop all your socials on the way out. <laughs> Love it, man. Uh -huh. Take care, guys.